call the meeting to order of the the March eighth Conway Select Board meeting. It's now six about six oh one, and we're holding this meeting by Zoom. Uh, people can watch this meeting on our FCAT YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube and you go to FCAT Media, that's our channel name, and you can watch all of our Conway Select Board meetings. Uh, some of our recent hearings, um, select board meetings from Deerfield and Sunderland and Waitley, if you are so interested. So, um, minutes. Did everybody get a chance to read the minutes from the last meeting? Yep. I thought they look great. Yep. So, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from last week. Did I hear a second? Yep. I heard somebody make a noise. Yep. And, and uh, so all in favor, uh, we'll all say aye and no nays. So we approve the minutes from the last meeting. So minutes, uh, I mean, uh, meetings attended by select board and usually we'll have Erica go first. Um, no meetings attended this past week, very slow. How about you, Phil? Today was the Frontier Budget Committee and then the Frontier School Committee. Um, we teed up the budget hearing for tomorrow. Um, uh, and um, uh, Friday was the Deerfield Board of Health uh, Frontier School Committee joint meeting to once again go over the winter sports and spring sports stuff. Um, so bless their hearts. They're, they get you in and out of there in five minutes. My goodness. <laughs> that Deerfield Board of Health, they don't mess around. No minutes, no nothing. Just boom, boom. So, yeah, that was it. FCAT tells me they're enjoying taping the, uh, the basketball games and they put them up on their channel. So if you're interested in high school basketball, you're not allowed to the gym, but you can watch them all on, uh, on our FCAT YouTube channel. It's a shame that we can't go to those. It's a shame that we can't go to those this year. There's um, their leading scorer is the front is a Boyden for that Patrick Boyden, and he's a senior and would have been nice to see. I played basketball with him for years. I miss being able to see those. Yeah. I, I think FCAT won an award last year for their coverage, or maybe two years ago, of one of the Frontier basketball games, a very a, a game. Uh, Turn around at the end, I think, but uh, it was very exciting. Uh, I, I had uh, I had no meetings. Slow week for me too, Erica. Um, how about public comments? Does anybody do we have any from anyone from the public here? I don't. I don't see anyone from the public. And, I'm from the public, but I don't oh, have a comment. Hi. <laughs> Oh, I just finally put myself into uh, what's it called? Uh, gallery view. So now I <laughs> see you there. You were off my screen uh, when I was in speaker view. Hi, Marilyn. Hi. No, no, no comment? Not on Great. this matter. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Bob, I, I have a comment, Bob. Sure. I'm, I'm from the finance committee, and, but uh, with Erica, I serve on the town um, administrator uh, selectman or select position, a chair of the, of the uh, committee. I teach too many committees. Uh, <laughs> uh, Steve, Steve, th this is an agenda item that's coming up um, oh. right after the public comments. Okay. I just wanted to, wanted to I make it. That was why you were here early, Steve. It's great. All uh, right. Okay. I'll let, let you go. Take care. Don't let it go. Just, just hold on a second. Okay. Um, so no public comments. So, so, so the next thing on our agenda is old business, and the first item on old business is an update on how the interim town administrator is going. So, Steve, take it away. Okay. First of all, we need to need to ask you if we could go into executive session, please, on uh, this uh, topic and give you an update on the candidate we did interview, the one we have coming up on Thursday. So we have a candidate last week and one this week coming up. So I need to, to get okay. you in the executive session yeah. first. So Tom, how do, how do we do that when there are people on the call? 
Um, I, I'm I'm sorry. I I, I did not know. Um, uh, I would I would. We're we're not prepared to go into executive session. I'm I'm sorry to say. Um, can, can can you give a general update of of where the discussions stand without going into specifics of uh, particular candidates? Okay. Uh, where we stand is that we would like to have a motion with the select board to be interviewing for the permanent position as well as the um, an advertised board, as well as the interim position. We have a candidate now, we have a candidate last week was interim position uh, and we had mixed feelings on it, I will say. Then next week or this week, we have a candidate that has a lot more experience and so forth, and uh, we'll look to see him on Thursday. Um, but we'd like to have neither neither candidate is candidate for permanent position or what you call permanent or full time position, whatever. Um, we have a we have interest from people that haven't yet submitted a resume that might be interested in a permanent position, as we're calling it. So I'd like to get your feeling or get a vote from the board that we could advertise for uh, the permanent position as well. Would you be comfortable doing both at the same time? Yes, that's what we want to do. It may not be, Tom is leaving on April 29th, so it may not be enough time for Tom to do it, but um, to have overlap. But it, the person we're interviewing on Thursday, I think, is an experienced town administrator, interim town administrator, and so forth. The, he won't need a whole lot of training time and extra time. So yeah, if we can, if if we can just keep it to the general, that would be great. Thanks. <laughs> so we're trying to make less work for you. I know you got a lot of work finishing up the warrant and all that before you leave, and get as much of it as done as you can. But we'd like to be able to interview. In advertise and interview for both or put the notice out that we want possibly an interim but possibly a permanent. Most towns have gone to permanent that I know about around here. They haven't gone to an interim, but there are such positions. And so we want to have it both ways that somebody could be an interim and then we get replaced with a permanent one. So anyway, later on, a different I'd be willing to make that motion, but Phil and Erica, what do you think? Um, I was on the, I'm on the search committee too, and I would support that. I don't know. I, um, I, I, I was looking, I, I, I saw the interim as a distinctly separate animal than the, than the, than the, than the long term. And um, I saw advantages to entertaining the, that, that separate animal sort of dip, separate and apart from the permanent. So I, I, um, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I did, I did, I was informed by someone whose opinion I value that, um, that if we wait, that, that if the permanent search is closer to the time of town meeting, there would be a couple, at least a couple of more very well qualified applicants. So but, uh, but the danger is if we don't find an interim that we're, you know, happy enough with, then we got nothing. So we could start looking for a permanent now. The permanent also could be an interim that evolves into a permanent with acceptance from the town and the committee and so forth. Uh, so, you know, it gives us an option, it gives us more options than just having a simple interim. But I mean, if you've got somebody the committee loves, I don't think we found that person yet, but if the committee loves in all ways, then they might evolve into a permanent. But the two candidates that we have now are only for interim because yeah. that was the way it was advertised. We'd like to get author authorization to at least advertise that here's the interim, here's a permanent. That's the way we want to go. But so there was also the suggestion that I saw though that uh, about just sort of re-advertising for the interim or, or advertising more broadly. Like, um, like I, I I was told that the MMA has. On, on their website, a, a directory for town administrators looking for, and that we weren't on there. Who is um, MMH, Phil? That's the Massachusetts Municipal Association. Either Tom or Chris, uh, Chris Trish has put it on there. We also put it um, on the administrators and so forth. 
Yes, we put it on the stam list and, and out for the retirees. Um, I was waiting for the outcome of this discussion to post it on the uh, the jobs list that Phil's talking about. So, you know, I, I, I'd like to take a, you know, I, you know, what do you just, because I, my understanding is that if it's posted more widely, we may get more applicants just for the interim. And I, you know, I, um, so I don't, I don't, but that's, that's what I, like we're trying I, to do, Phil. We're trying to get both and not uh, plenty of applicants that may, maybe somebody who wants to just be permanent gets talked into doing the interim as well. It works both ways, but we want to make sure we're advertising the full position in any way that somebody wants to cut it. I like the idea of having a broader search. Uh, you, you know, in other words, not just an interim, but an interim to permanent and possibly a permanent, depending on who, who, who comes in. Steve, do you, are you worried about how much time we have? I mean, whether we have time to or how soon we'll be able to get a permanent if it's going to take a long time to find an interim? I'm not, I'm not so much worried about that. I think we have plenty of time. It's a month and a half, approximately till Tom has to go. And uh, he's going to have done most of the work that needs to be done prior to his leaving. So there isn't a whole lot for an interim position to do, frankly, um, the way I hear it. And... Um, but uh, Tom can correct me on that, but, you know, comfortable looking at it, but we, we want to be able to offer if somebody came in a permanent and somebody just came in as interim, not have the per permanent person have to wait until that interim position is, once goes four months or six months or whatever. That's the point of this is try to get the best, the whole range of people who might be considered for the job, either interim or permanent. Yeah. Or both. That's that's the point. We just want more flexibility. Don't think we got as many resumes as we thought. We only got two so far, right, Tom? Unless you got any new ones. Uh, we got two originally, and and we we have gotten a new one uh, recently, and yeah. and and, uh, and we'll be we'll be meeting about that on Thursday. But what, one of the one of the two original ones took himself out of the running before he. Uh, came in for an interview. So we only had one in an in interview and he took him ass off of the running because he got a job in Hubbardsburg. That's what we're afraid of, that some other town snapped him up, snaps uh, uh, not him or her up, it might be a her. So and whatever it is. So you're still shaking your head, Phil. Um, yeah, I, I, the, the I'd like to see what happens when we post the interim more broadly and, see, and give it a week or two and see if that makes a difference. And the, 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 low, the low response in and of itself as a basis for changing the plan in my mind, I don't know. Um, like, because my, I, I was told that MMA, the MMA posting is gonna shake, shake some loose by itself. I don't know if that's true, but. Have you talked to Trish? Phil, she's an authority on this because she coaches these people. She knows every one of these people and she's had interest from people who may be interested in the permanent position or maybe she's trying to scare up temporary, but it gives us the possibility of going both ways, which is, you know, I don't know how much you want to discuss this tonight before the finance meeting, meeting but, you know, I'd rather see a vote on it and go ahead with it uh, normally my inclination is to go with go with the committee you know what that, that you're the guys who interviewed and you're the guys who talked about it uh and, and you know i think we should keep interviewing for a temporary and we should we could broaden that search uh, uh but also look for other candidates people that might work towards becoming permanent or somebody who just wants, who we might like enough to, to be the permanent. What's your reluctance, Phil? Maybe we're not hearing something. Uh, my, <clears throat> my reluctance is that uh, I try not to set something up that's going to end up with me getting a, a candidate or candidates that I'm not going to be in favor of. 
So, um, but that's that's my reluctance. And I, I don't- but What does that have to do with whether you interview for permanent or temporary interim? Um, I don't see that conflict. Yeah, like, like, like I said, I thought that there were potentials for uh, interim that would sort of have a different approach um, than, than the potential for the, than the people that were interested in permanent and just sort of, well, I was looking I, forward to sort of a full blown sort of systems analysis um, by someone passing through like that. Okay. Well, um, are you looking for somebody more than four months or so? Um, like that, that, that type of person is, is like interested in short term, whatever. And I, that, uh, and I'm not so sure that those types of people ex uh, um, have applied yet. I, I, my understanding is maybe um, they haven't, but that they're out there. So I don't. I, don't I just know. don't see. I, as chairman of the committee, I just don't see a reluctance, reason to not advertise for as much as we possibly can and see the entire universe of people. It might be our interim and or permanent, both ways. So I would ask the select board to have a vote and let's go ahead with it one way or the other. When's your Thursday meeting? At 3, 3, 20, well, three o'clock. Carter is just accepted, right, Tom? So he's- if we, can, if we can keep specifics out of it, that would be great. <laughs> Yeah, Carter's own. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, I, my my fault. Anyway, uh, he the this new candidate has accepted for interim only to be considered for interim only. But we have others that uh, may be coming about who are permanent that we'd like to at least hear about and see what their problem is. Maybe they take a job somewhere else where one of the candidates that we had before he took the job at Coverson, just as we were about to offer him an interview as well. So we lost him. That's we knew that. I, we knew that before we even opened our job search though, that that was a, uh, for that particular situation that that was that, in the You're not sharing with the committee. Who, who knew that? Well, we knew it was gonna be tight, Steve. We knew that whether we could get it or not, but we, it no, was that, very tight. That particular situation with the previous person being called away to Afghanistan or whatever, and we we knew that that was. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. That's not the person we had as a candidate who took another job in Coverson. It's an interim job. Yeah. Yeah, I I think maybe if we um if we have this next interview, um, we can. Um, because uh, the person has said uh, it, the, that the interim position is the only one he's interested in, um, maybe we can come back next week and either either have that person um, interview for the permanent position, for the interim, or or, or go go for the go for the full um, uh, posting of the of the permanent position. Um, uh, if, if, the, if the committee doesn't feel it's, it's, um, it's, uh, the candidate is, is suitable for, for bringing forward to the select board. So we do have somebody who might fill the interim position. And when that happens, we can always start advertising for the permanent position at that time. Um, you know, with the understanding that it's going to be, you know, however, however long we negotiate for the uh, um, the interim for. But we've already said the interim is going to be recruiting for the permanent position. So that's part of it. I mean, these positions are longer or shorter. Um, but I would say um, that you could, you could um, if you did hire the interim, we'd only be waiting a week to advertise for the permanent. And if you did hire the interim, um, you know, they could get started on the permanent search right away. Um, what I'm hearing from Phil is that he doesn't necessarily want to hire a permanent position, or at least not one with the same job description, which is a different question, um, I think, than hiring an interim now. 
Uh, but that would also give us time to, to work through that issue. Steve, what would you I, think I, about I waiting a week? Go ahead. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. I'm 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 not I'm not uh, nihilistic here. Like uh, you know, um, but the the uh, yeah, I, I do think that we have more time, and I'd like to just sort of I you know I uh, I'm not in any particular hurry, so that's 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 kind of where I'm where I'm coming from. I don't feel that, you know this. The, the number of applicants for interim hasn't whatever ha in and of itself hasn't like struck me as a reason to hurt to, to advance the process but um but i'm open so so, you, so so if if this fellow were good you you still wouldn't necessarily want to interview him in a week for interim you mean no no that's that's Yes, I would. Steve, how about how about delaying it a week? I I, I mean I I want the, I the committee to, to feel like they're getting listened to also. And we can schedule and we can schedule the the um the executive session for before the select board meeting, and talk it out. How long you you have, to. How long do you have to post executive session, Tom? Is that a week ahead or? Four? 48 hours. Yeah, it, it, it's 48 hours. Uh, if there were an interview, um, that would be in, in public session. But if you wanted to further talk about what was going to go on during the interview, I'd suggest meeting it at, at 530, you know, half an hour before the regular select board meeting. What do you mean if there's an interview? We as a committee aren't interviewing in public session, going into executive session when we do it. I don't understand. Oh, right. The board interview. Board yeah. interview is public interview? Don't you yes. Have, don't you have an exec session first and then have a public interview? You want to have the select board have opinions first, and then you and then you want to maybe have a second interview where the public might weigh in on it. But I don't see you want to go out there with your questions in a, without executives. That's a better way to work it. That's why we have a committee is so that that can happen without, uh, you know, if, if the select board does the interview, the interview has to be done in public. Well, yeah, that, that would be the final interview. <clears throat> the preliminary interview can be an executive session. I just don't want to have just one candidate to consider. Consider we ought to hear what permanent style candidates would want as conditions. That's they're not. They're, we had a the first candidate we had on the interview process was able to start without giving a notice of 30 days. He could start immediately, but I don't think we decided on him. So the problem is, we you only have one more candidate coming it's possible um and if even if we like him we don't know what the permanent condition might be we don't know what the interim conditions might be maybe he wants six at least six months or something this guy's had prior on his resume other jobs for at least six months so that may put a a damper on get a permanent position to come into there if we took this person so I just want to have more options to be considering the possibilities of getting somebody permanent that we might all like and might want to just go with that. Because we're pretty well set this year for the budget and we want <laughs> him hear this or her. Excuse me, I keep saying him. Let's say whatever you say. It's properly gender neutral. But anyway, um, I, just, I just feel it's uh, we ought to have a op more open-ended and uh, even though we do have the personal grapevine going out there, it is helpful to advertise on the MMA or whatever else you call it that our or town administrator might hear see it. That's my take on it. Yes, and that makes sense too, I think, to have more candidates to interview. Right.
doesn't commit us to anything, Phil. I don't think if you interview permanent people, you just say no. Not interested. Well, I, I mean, if I call it for a vote, it sounds to me like Eric and I might say might might support the committee, and then and I and the last thing I want, Phil, is you to feel like you're getting walked on. You, you know, no, I, I, and I don't I don't I don't feel that way. It's okay, and and mm -hmm. the 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 request is a reasonable one. It is. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. Uh, um, that I, I think the only reason that we wouldn't want to post a permanent the permanent position would be if we were going to reconsider what that position looked like. But as Tom said, that's a different question, right? Um, and we haven't even had those discussions. And we may develop, you know, a slightly different role depending on who the candidate is. Okay, well, I'm going to I'm going to make a motion that we we go with the committee's recommendation and that we extend the interview the the uh, application process to include interim and interim to permanent or somebody interested in just the permanent position, and and that we will uh, advertise it in as many places in more places, especially including the MMA list. I'll second that. Yeah, I'm on the so, fence. I, I, I'm on the fence on the. I am. I, I, yeah, I, I'll go along. Yeah, I'm not. My hands are not tied for sure. Yeah, but I'll okay. go along with it. So yes. So I guess we have three eyes, and we'll say it passes. Thank you, Phil. So. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Steve, for your thank persuasive. You, Steve. Thank you for your Steve. persuasive advocacy, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Great. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so next we have some new business and the first one is a request. I see Janet here, I think. I, I think I, are those yes. your, your mouse and your hand? I'm looking yes. At, uh, uh, who wants to request that we create a forest and trails committee. Uh, uh, well, uh, I want to introduce two, well, first of all, Mac McCoy, who's on the open space committee is here. Thank you, Mac and uh, Marilyn Webster and Deb Donaldson are here to talk about uh, forest and trails. Um, so why don't you, Deb and Marilyn, um, briefly share your thoughts. Is Marilyn still here or is she? Yeah, is, I'm, uh, I'm here. Oh, here. there you are, okay, yep, yep, yeah. great. Um, okay, thoughts, um, some thoughts. <laughs> um, well, Janet had approached us about being part of a, like a, a working group affiliated with the Open Spaces Committee, which we have learned is not actually possible. We would need to join the Open Spaces Committee. Well, now, wait a minute. That's not... Uh, that, that's how I understood Tom's well, email. Okay, Tom, uh, sorry, Tom, We're, what I was proposing is just a group of people uh, that would work on specific forest and trails issues. And when there, and when there were significant <laughs> issues or something meaty uh, that it would, the open space committee then would follow our standard procedures for posting it on our agenda and holding holding a standard committee meeting. Um, and uh, the, the confusion is whether they were gonna be, Tom thought they were gonna be a sub, subcommittee, I mean, cause that word was used first, uh, but it, it, it won't work if they're a subcommittee. It, they could try to be a separate committee. Um, Okay, okay, uh, Marilyn. Maybe I, I guess I, I feel like I'm still a little confused, but I, I okay, well, that's why we're here. I guess. So, Janet, are you proposing an informal committee that's a yes. combination of the open space committee and the trails committee? Yes, and 
you have people in mind on each of those committees who might do this? Well, it would be the sort of, I mean, we're hoping it would be a forest and trails and then Deb and Marilyn have, have come forward and, and are, are uh, sketched out some priorities based on the new forest management plans and they live in, nearby and they hike the trails all the, all the time and, and they love them and want to help take care of them. Um, and the question is, what's the best organizational structure to do that? No, I assume that we're forming this informal working group because of the forest plan that we created, our, our, our forestry management plan. Well, it gives, it gives good directions. It gives lots of practical suggestions. We've had, we had a trails committee in the past. It was affiliated, it, uh, the responsibilities were assigned were assigned to the Park and Rec Committee. And that trails group, you know, worked for a while and they did some good things under Walter Goodrich's uh, leadership, but it it disbanded in 2008 and that's when they got merged there. They, that group um, didn't want to do all the arduous committee work and, you know, posted agendas, et cetera, et cetera. And they just kind of wanted to work on trails. So uh, that's why it's, a, it's an issue that's come up now. I mean, the Open Space Committee, and we have long recognized that, that there are some linkages in our trails that could be improved for better access and, and more people in town might be able to just, townspeople might be able to enjoy them a little better. Um, and it's an interest, but we recognize that it takes a bunch of dedicated work in some areas. So that's why the, you know, having some new blood on this is, is a wonderful idea. Jen, I think, you know, it, um, this is Philip, what, what, like the, 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 I, like the, the open meeting law kind of requires us to do things either in the open or, I mean, if it's an informal committee, there would be no basis to be here before the select board. Like the, 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 the premises of, you know, the, the, we, the committee will decide when something is important enough to be, to follow the open meeting law and when something is mundane enough that it's too, prob it's too much of a pain in the butt to do that. Like that's, that's right. basically, yeah, like we can't, that's a premise I, that- I understand that, 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 Phil. That's why there would be a liaison with this group and, and they would know when, um, something other than picking up sticks was was being considered and that's when it would go on the open space committee meeting agenda and be posted and so forth and then if there's and then we would know whether we need to have, bring in the select board you know if there's something uh appropriate to refer to you so you know one of the reasons that this is up here is for you to be aware and also to recognize that the that the function, the, the debate is whether to move the function from the non-functioning park and rec committee, move that trail uh, uh, portion over to open space. Or if Marilyn wants to form her own committee, you know, there's still, there are still other options. Could, could somebody explain to me like how an informal committee works and if it has any authorities? An informal committee is a group of people that get together to do something that they're all interested in. And they have only authority, the only authority they have is that of any other individual in the community. Um, so, so it would be speaking. like an association. It, it, there, there are many associations in town that, that get together and do various things, um, but they're not town committees. And, and occasionally interests can intersect and they can become involved in the work of a committee. Um, and that's fine. And then, and then, the, then it becomes the public's business and, and, and we take it up as, as town business. So just say hypothetically, I wanted to fix one of the culverts near the, the Maynard Cemetery, and I was willing to fund that by myself. 
Could I just go ahead and do that? Wouldn't I need the town's permission before doing that? Yeah. <laughs> and you shouldn't fund it. You know, the, no, fund it, fund it, fund it. No. No. <laughs> That's why it's hypothetical. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I thought that what we needed to do was to form a forestry or a forest committee due to the forest plan that we created, and it doesn't have to be done immediately. And my understanding is that, Janet, and I don't blame you, you have plenty of work to do as the open space committee. Uh, uh, at some point, though, I think we need to form a forestry committee. And whether it's a forest and trails committee, because poor trails, they, they seem not to have a spot. <laughs> they bounce around, I guess. Uh, and Bob, then I wanted to see the forest committee's doing. Pardon me? What would you see the forest committee doing? Well, in our forest plan, we created a number of decisions that the town is going to have to make in the future. Some of them had to do with whether we want to do any or no management of our forest. Uh, there were a number of things in the plan. There are certain species that in the plan it proposes we might want to thin some of them out where there's lots of identical you know, small seedlings or trees. They're going to grow up to become trees that are too crowded or, or that, uh, and, and, and part of the plan had to do with trails, whether we, we want to, you know, m maintain certain trails or what, you know, just what we're going to do with trails. Okay. So, so for you, the trails committee would be, their, their focus would be on implementing parts of that plan. Well, well, the forest committee would be implementing parts of that plan, yeah. but okay. there is some trail work that gets discussed yep. in the plan. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I mean, it seemed with with it seems like forest and trails go together because a lot of the the focus is on the public trails here. And there was proposals about signage that we might want to yeah. put up. Um, and, and and the events of last night, I, I mean, make that even more. And I don't know if you know that there somebody got lost in the Conway uh, Town Forest last yesterday afternoon, and <laughs> required required a full on, you know, fire department full on wow. rescue. Wow! Some, you know, with all hands on deck kind of a thing. And the just to witness that the fire department is amazing. The number of people that went and got their own snowmobiles and ATVs and converged and all over. But the the trails up there. You get to an intersection, you get turned around, you get lost. Your, did your cell phone person? dies. Did they and, find and, the person? And, what's that? Did they find? Yeah, they did. They did find, and you know, w once they got there on the scene, they found the person within, you know, a half an hour. Um, but the, the 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 technology is, you, you think, okay, they can they can triangulate the cell phone, but uh, th you can't. The the third cell tower is in Williamsburg. So they get a, a location on a GPS from the state police, but it's uh, plus or minus 1500 yards in any direction. And, uh, and, and you know, so it, it, it the, the, and, and in talking with the fire department up there, they're like, yeah, we're here every year, every other year to do a rescue for someone that gets lost on these trails. And it's just, there's no, and, and there, there is an intersection of public safety and trails and trail markers and all that. And we saw that last night that we would actually reduce our firefighting expenses um, with with a functioning trails committee um, and save lives potentially. So it's just something else to think about. Marilyn, am I hearing you slightly leaning towards being willing to lead a committee like this? <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm uh, <laughs> Deb's laughing at me. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I feel like. I haven't fully decided because I've just kind of been feeling like I don't have quite enough information of understanding what all is involved. I've never been on a town committee, so I don't know what all is involved. I don't have a clear, there are things I feel really strongly about in terms of our forests. And for me, our forests aren't just our trails that they are, you know, so if I look at parks, rec and trails, I feel like the forest gets missing from that part. Um, and I, there's things I feel strongly about. Um, 
and I feel like I don't quite have enough information about what I'm getting myself in for in terms of. Could we get you a copy of the plan? Have you read the plan? Oh, I've read parts of the plan and uh -huh. I was involved in the conversations last year. I came to a couple select board meetings and I went to both the Zoom meetings with the foresters. Great. Um, and I had actually planned to ask somebody what was happening with respect to the plan when um, I got an email from Janet. <laughs> Uh, I was trying to recruit from the participants. Um, yeah. What 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 I've tried so, ja to ja Janet, are are you open to considering doing this? You know, like uh, as as an official town committee, and just sort of getting yes. into the habit of doing like really brief agendas and minutes. Just and just yes. not here. Here's the thing: we we have seven people on the open space committee now. I mean that, and and we we don't want a larger open space committee. Um. What I was trying to tell Marilyn and perhaps some of you others who have been on these committees about how the town rule <laughs> or committees will sap their energy. You have to have an official number of people. They all have to be sworn, appointed by the select board and sworn in. You can't have any meetings uh, unless you have a quorum. Sometimes which has happened to our open space committee in the past before I was chair, we'd be down there uh, and suddenly somebody didn't have the key to the town hall or uh, we just don't have an, a quorum. And so we wasted all our time. You can't meet, you cannot discuss town business with the, the culvert you might want to replace uh, you, uh, among just members of the committee because if everything has to be done in this open, publicly posted meeting. And the, the, the enthusiasts who uh, wanna work on trails uh, will be bummed out and not show up and the springtime comes and they work during the day and they're gonna go out, run the trails and not, not sit for a, a meeting that may or may, may not happen. And uh, Trish, uh, and Casey, maybe you could fill in a little bit uh, to flush out those requirements of town committees, because Marilyn's heard too much from me. Hey, do, call on Deb too. <laughs> you know, I, I think what what you listed as drawbacks are are to me those are those are the positive, the, the, those are pluses because um, you know the 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 prevent you know. In, it's really good that they prevent government members from anybody involved in government from <laughs> making decisions outside of the committee and outside of the public. It's really good that 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 public can trust that decisions are made openly and not in in back rooms. It's these are all really good things. Yes, and yes, they are, Phil. What what I'm getting as I envision this, everything like the proposal to replace the culvert, you know the the this informal group would decide these are our f three or four top priorities. And uh, we had somebody look at it and it needs X, Y, Z. And then we put it on the open space committee agenda, uh, you know, welcome input, and then, you know, work with the town, decide do, do you need quotes or, you know, what the prices in are, help with the formality of maybe getting bids and then and then present that in this to the select board for approval. So I don't feel I don't see I don't see any of this not being done in in the public. I don't see the real decision making. Uh, but it can't be up to the committee to decide what gets what's real well, and what's not. It, it can't. It, that, okay, that's not... so 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 Marilyn and Deb, you understand that you would then, you know, decide. How, how many members are in this, ask the select board to form a separate trails committee and um, get your members and then start getting them sworn in and, and taking the, the uh, conflict of interest training and the op understand and read the open meeting law and do, and do all that. And that's fine. Janet, you make it sound so appealing. But listen, yeah, the, the, conflict, <laughs> the conflict of interest training now, it, you cannot flunk it and it takes 10 minutes. And, Listen, they get, and, I, and, and, and if you try to put the wrong answer in it, they don't accept yes. the answer Phil, until you type Phil, in the correct how many one. How committees have you been on before way you too, before, way too many. 
Look, so you were on the school board. I have done this a long time and having enough members, keeping them interested, willing to participate um, is a challenge. That's just all. And well, Janet, you are doing an unbelievable job on the Open Space Committee. And there's, and there's none a lot of, of it hold it against you that you a are lot of really paperwork. trying to say, I would rather not also add forests and trails to my Open Space Committee. And uh, uh, Right. But, you know, the, 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 the reason that I'm so cautious about this is just because the, the issue of forest is really important to, like, we heard this uh, over those forest stewardship plans mm -hmm. hearings when there was 20, 30 people in. And there was a whole lot of people that felt super strongly about this stuff. Um, and that uh, if, if, if we're setting something up to deal with that particular issue, I really do feel that we need to have our I's dotted and our, you know, T's well, crossed. And, and certainly, you know, there should be public hearings. There should be informational sessions that are advertised, that are posted well in advance. Um, and, and there should be, serious public discussion. But I don't think that involved if people want to just do trail work. I mean, you know, we have existing trails in town. I mean, if somebody wanted to put up a new sign, yes, you ought to have a hearing or make sure everyone agrees to putting up some new signage. But it's, it's not... It, you, you wouldn't have to hold open... You wouldn't have to hold open hearings just to do a lot of the things that it sounds like Marilyn or Deb that you want to do. But. Well, but they, but they would have to do it in the, in a publicly posted meeting that follows all the rules. I wish more people in town came to more of our open meetings. I mean, they will have a meeting of the forest and trails committee and I suspect they'll be the only ones there. Yes. They'd have to publish minutes. They'd have to take minutes. They'd have to post the meeting. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Well, I want Deb to chime in, but I'm not, I'm not saying I'm real excited about forming a new committee, but I also feel like, I guess the select board's views and opinions on this also matter to me as to the best way to move forward. Deb, over to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to, um, back Marilyn up is like we didn't really know can you hear me yep yeah. yep um um and you know I am also a neophyte when it comes to town meetings and that sort of thing I've never joined a committee and and my concern is you know we went to all this work and expense to do this forestry evaluation of where we're at and what does the town want and I think that we had a really good um survey of the town of what's important to the people there. And now it's important to get people to put a little attention to it. And I feel like it got kind of created and then put on a shelf. So when Janet called and said, are you interested in paying attention to this, what we, what we created? I was like, yes, but I also didn't think about, um, you know, I thought there was an existing um, committee or you know format for doing this sort of thing so if we have to form another committee and with to do this then fine but you know I just sort of saw it as a group of interested citizens of Conway bringing attention to the open space committee or the you know the parks and rec group of like this is something that the town should pay attention to. So, I, I just, so the, 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 the forest management plans are only a few months old. And the, the way that that worked out was that w whenever there was a contentious issue or it, during our public meetings, whenever we came to a decision point and there was widely varying differences of opinion, the, the, the decision was pushed forward to an imaginary committee in the future to then give it the level of granular detail and attention that each of those issues require. Um, and, and so that's kind of how that forest management plan came, uh, is the way it is. And it's also why we're in need of a committee to address those issues. But each one of those issues are, will be before the committee because they were sub, the subject of disagreements of town residents. Right. So they're not, they're not, none of them are. Dollars. 
you know, I think they're, they're all interesting issues. Um, but, you know, I think we're, we've been. Hello? Uh, Hi, Janet. Hi, Janet. But it, ha it hasn't quite, it hasn't quite been um, put away in the shelf so, and ignored so, uh, quite yet. Uh, I think we're yeah, a little so bit we, too we, soon we, to be able to get that far. We're now about 20 minutes over where we should be in our meeting right now. And, and the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the finance you, committee and has joined us. Uh, do you think we could continue this next week or the week after? I, I don't know that this is something that's pressing right now. Marilyn, maybe maybe you and Deb and some people would like to make a proposal to us of what you might want to do. And uh, are there Dr. are there Tom? rules? Excuse me. Are there rules and regulations? Is there some kind of document that explains how one goes about setting up a committee and that kind of stuff? Tom, are they written down somewhere? Or could, Marilyn, if yeah. you could just talk to Tom, he knows them inside and out. Sure. Okay. If you just send an email to selectboard at townofconway.com, I will happily enter into a conversation with you about that. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, Tom. And are we planning sure. that we'll continue this discussion next week? Uh, you could talk to Tom about that. I'm not sure okay. what's on our agenda <laughs> right now. We may have a pretty full agenda already. Okay. All right. To no, be continued. But, but, right. this is, but this is important, and I'd, I'd like yeah. to see this uh, up and running. So, I, you know, I encourage you. Let's let's figure it out. So it sounds to me like the select board is encouraging creating a separate committee. Is this true? I would, yes. Okay. I mean, that that is the most kosher of all options. <laughs> er, all right. Erica, is that how you're leaning to? Well, I mean, what, what I'm hearing from Janet is that the open space committee would prefer not to take this on as a committee. Um, and rather have like a, perhaps a subcommittee work on it. But then what I'm hearing from Phil is that that's really, you don't think that that is the appropriate way to proceed, that it really deserves to be a committee in and of itself. And, I, and based upon the number of people who did attend those open meetings, I mean, I would, and, and the fact that there was a lot of disagreement about, you know, different parts of that proposal, I would think it wouldn't be that hard to recruit members to this committee, because I feel like people in this town feel very strongly about forests and trails. And I know that that is a concern that, that that's, it's hard to get people to serve on town committees, but it seems like this might be one that would be really attractive to a lot of people. So I'm in favor of, you know, putting it out there and seeing what kind of response we get. This is Mac okay. McCoy on open space. It does seem like what the need is forest and trails. So what it, my impression is the people that were interested in the trails, now it's a broader thing that includes forest. And that's something which, uh, you know, Maryland, Deb, et cetera, would have to consider, uh, you know, the open space just wants to help uh, find ways for people to most easily get involved in addressing the, the trails interest. And of course there's this broader uh, and quite interesting bigger forest in, uh, thing that is is yet emerging. So I think that's uh, clearly where Marilyn and crew to take the next week and or so Ken. or the information <laughs> from Tom and, and consider uh, uh, and, and bounce back to open space and, and we can talk further about what will help facilitate it the most. That's all we're out, out there for. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Mac. Tom, next on our agenda okay. is the town of Hatfield. Do we have to, is that just a notice that we need to get back to them? Yes. Do we need to definitively tell them whether we're going to join their parade? Yes. Uh, you each should have been forwarded their invitation. And if you can reply individually, that would be great. Okay. We don't have to. We don't have to decide that now. I mean, I, I think that. Anyway, okay. Uh, could, could I see a nodding of heads of Erica and yes. Phil? Whether you yep. have any interest in going to, to oh, be in the Hatfield parade? <laughs> yes. No. Well, it's not a. It's not a parade. It's it's a stay in your car, drive around. Virtual. Uh, yes. A, right. A um, drive through parade. I was like, nodding to being willing to respond to that email um, okay. individually. <laughs> okay. 
I, I okay. was nodding to be willing to participate in a group civic insult to to Hatfield, but other than that, I don't have much interest in just driving around their town. Okay, you know we, we Conway Rules. Conway, uh, I'll drive around in your car with a gigantic Conway Rules Hatfield drool sign or something <laughs> like that. But. People will laugh, but I'll have you know that was a T-shirt that we wore when we marched in the Sunderland parade. So. Okay, uh, we have one more short thing and then we're on to the finance committee. Hold just one second. So we need to reappoint Michelle Sanger and Giselle uh, to the Cultural Commission. Uh, can somebody make a motion to that effect motion. and any issues? I think we all know them and support that 100%. I, I heard a motion from Erica and I will second it. And we're all shaking our heads yes. and. And we don't mean to be slighting them, but thank you very much. And this is wonderful. So, so, th so that passes, Tom. With terms expiring June 30th, 2024. Correct. So now, now we have the meat of the meeting here, and which was to, well, if, Tom, if you want to go over the budget quickly, do you have a review? And then we're going to talk about storing records. Yeah, I have no changes uh, from last week, except I, I did send out a, a corrected version. I had uh, inadvertently compared 2022 with 2020 instead of 2021, which is why it looked like our uh, our budget was going up over 9%. It's actually not. Um, if anybody uh, wants to see that who has not seen it, please let me know. That That's really all I have. Great. Uh, so the, the 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 bulk of our meeting here, I think, was gonna is going to be to talk about records and what we can do about records, and ultimately whether we want to, you know, um, I'll say support the purchase of the new shelving to put into the town hall vault. And uh, we looked at the plans for that shelving. It costs twenty or twenty-two thousand. The bid that we got for the one we're looking at right now. Um, the, the the vault is fairly totally full um, and it's you know not the only fireproof storage that we have but it's the major fireproof storage that we have so, so what was the budget amount that was requested for new shelving was that I thought it was like twenty two thousand dollars twenty two so we so we, we, Lee put out a, a request for a bid for a particular shelf that she actually felt might be about the high end of the shelves, but probably won't come down much. And so she felt comfortable that if if we could request that amount, then we would be spending hopefully less than that. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna you know there, there's two reasons why I'd really like to talk to Lee about this before we vote on it, and I'd like to invite her to next Monday's meeting. There, and for, first of all. The, her note that she that that was attached to Tom's agenda this on Thursday, that it it sort of um, you know it, it went beyond sort of the need just for her records and it started talking about historical deeds that she wanted to save for research, and um, and so and and there's this crossover between documents that are her and she's and documents that she's uh, in charge of that are. The Conway Historical Commission, and and you know if if this is like historical commission historic deeds, then the uh, instead of spending twenty thousand dollars to store them, they could just be given to the historical society to store them for free, and then they all go online and could be, actually be accessed um, because they would all be digitized because that's what that's that group does. So. Um, you know, so so that's the one thing I'd really like to inquire. Just what it because it, at first it was like I need them for my records, and she didn't really come out and say that, but that's what I was thinking. But her last note is like I need them for historic deeds, and of which we have digital copies. But uh, so, um, and then the second thing is that I we I really want to talk to her about the whole scanning and whether that's you know the 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 thing that that um that that Steve drew up. And because if we're going to do that, that should have an impact on that budget request, I think. Well, she was um, she was in favor of right. scanning solutions. So it seems so, so, she would like so, 
to pursue both. So there's those two things that I'd really like to get worked out about this specific request. Yeah, um, we would we would like to have Lee on the call, but she since she's not here, I have invited Brian Cook, who you may all see. Brian, I can't see your Zoom. I don't know if you set it up on Zoom, but you might change your, your mic also. But Brian sent me at my request. Um, sort of a recount of what we've done for the last 13, 14, 15 years. I can't even remember when we had an actual document because we don't keep documents anymore. And we've gone to something where we have a lot more documents than the city of Conway um, with the store. <laughs> and uh, we've not, we've not, it's all been scanned and kept that way. But uh, Brian had a proposal to uh, that I asked him to outline just he's doing the same thing over at Leverett where he lives as the deputy fire commissioner well he's doing it as a consultant but he also also is a deputy fire com commissioner at Leverett Brian do you want to take your mic off are you still there yeah yep, I'm not. still here okay right it'd be nice to see you on zoom if you're on zoom you can put yourself on zoom I'm actually uh, using a different headset at the moment so I don't have a my camera set up in this office in any way um I don't know if you can, uh, Tom, if you can put the, if there were any questions about it, we had a whole scanning initiative, to try to get rid of, let's make a dent this year. Uh, it's, you know, my feeling is it's likely to be turned down at town, town meeting anyway, if it's not turned down on select board um, for another 20,000 of storage for documents when we could go to scanning and make a dent on car a lot cheaper and get get make a dent on um, that going to electro, electronic storage. So that's my- and Leah uh, said that she has a, a scanner and that they yes. are doing some scanning now. I did see, I did see when I was in, get swear, sworn in for the town commission, town administrator uh, committee, I did see the scanner and I think it's a Rico machine and it's good scanner and Yes, they could just staff it to get stuff more done. And I don't know, I haven't gone through all the documents are required that be what Lee and other town officers would tell us, which ones do they have to keep hard copy? Are there any really? And in this day and age, and or can we go all electronic? What is it? What's the story? Brian has had some luck with our company and with other cities doing this. So. I asked Brian to join us tonight uh, if you'd like to have a continuation or whatever. It's up to you when what when you want to bring Brian into this. I'd love to hear from him. Hi, Brian. Hi, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so first Steve asked me to give a rough some rough numbers as to what would work well. And I just based it off what I've seen other small towns such as Leverett utilize um, and businesses as well at a smaller scale. Um, but basically, I put together some hardware, um, not knowing any of your infrastructure um, or really needs besides the scanning. I didn't know if it would be used for computer backups at the town hall as well or different departments or whether it would be file sharing among. Um, but I put together I just some rough hardware based on um, having 16 terabytes of storage set up in a configuration um, that's safe and redundant using, you know, the latest encryption, um, having multiple drive failures. So with having six drives, if two were to go down simultaneously for whatever kind of event, um, it would still run perfectly fine. You just pop another disc in there and then mentioned the um, necessity of having a secondary <laughs> offsite encrypted backup as well to be able to support if something horrible um, were to happen to the main site where that data was either flooded or another hurricane, uh, if I'm allowed to mention that, or anything else. Uh, tornado. Tornado. Sorry, tornado. <laughs> where it happened to roll through and just, uh, you know, lift it and take it away, but having some kind of backup for not only scanning operation, but computers as well. I'm not sure of your infrastructure. So I threw together um, a rough package that with... Um, looking at the desktop version, you know, a six bay with a spare. Um, I think I got to the hardware is about 2750, which during the pandemic, that's, you know, plus or minus 
10 to 20 percent um, as far as technology prices goes and availability. And then um, it really depends on how much data is going to be stored as far as the offsite backup um, cost. But mainly it's, you know, half a penny to two cents per gigabyte a month for your storage. So if you're, I give the example of 500 gigabytes of data, depending on what vendor you select and go with it between 250 um, and 1050 to 1050 a month for that kind of data storage. Um, and it sounds like you already have a nice scanner, so you wouldn't need any additional infrastructure, perhaps, unless you wanted to do multiple buildings um, or have people connecting remotely uh, to access that information and data. And how about staffing? Would we have to hire? No, nope. it, it, it would be minimal. It would be very easy to train. Um, the, what, I sh what I showed was the Synology disk station. Um, so whoever does any of your computer updates at the moment, um, it's simple, you know, once a month, ch check the system out. You can have email alerts for when your disk storage starts to get full that you need to increase your storage. Um, very minimal data compared to like a normal Windows type server with all these security updates and features. Um, it's the primary duty of this would be to store files in a safe and secure manner. But Steve, in your office, you, you hire somebody that does- Now we have a part-time person that maintains all our documents and has for years. Um, and in the pandemic, I mean, we, it comes in the door in snail mail but it all cause, also comes email. It also comes any other electronic form faxes. They're all converted to, to, to electronic documents. But part of the reason to have Brian come to the meeting and initiate a discussion was that he might talk to Roy, Roy Cohen, who's also on the finance committee, and find out what our, um, what our resources are at the city, maybe in a general way, and, and maybe improve those so that this could be a comprehensive project. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's not as much as what Lee has in the budget for requests for $22,000 for shelving, whether it rolls or not. It's still, it's a lot cheaper. And we have never lost a thing. Everything has been there. We've needed and it just works perfectly. It's a modern age of business. And, uh, it can be applied through cities as well. So he's got a project, as he said, in Leverett. That's my extent of knowledge of this, but certainly for us, it works great. And we ought to be going to some sort of paper rather than just storage of paper. Uh, Brian, how did Leverett switch over? How did they convert? We are currently in the process of going through that. Um, we're actually, we've, we have set up the file sharing. We're right now in the process. We're going a little bit beyond the, the scanning um, at our public safety complex, um, we have the, one of the Synology systems that we're also doing some domain management and user control um, and some more features that this system allows. Um, so we're actually integrating that. Um, we've got a few different technology projects in the works that we're working through at the moment. Um, one of them is we tr are transitioning all the phone systems to the voice over internet, um, including the whole schools getting switched over. So that's one of the projects I'm assisting with. Um, but a lot of it's just setting the system up and then providing training to the people working in the buildings. Um, and most of it's not much of a workflow change if set up correctly. They would just save documents to a different location on their computer system. Are you scanning old documents or, or will you just do this for new documents and over seven years, you know, the number of old documents will... So it really depends by department. Um, for example, the fire department, I'm the deputy chief of the fire department there. And over the past year, maybe two years, um, we've scanned all our old paper permits going back to the 30s and 40s. So we are, are archiving those electronically and then we're uh, purging those out of our system to make space in our storage. Um, I'm not, I'll, I'll admit right off the bat, I'm not familiar you know, enough to know how long you have to retain, if you do have to retain paper copies of some items. Um, but going back to the 30s through, you know, 10 years ago, it's not necessary to have them in paper. Usually it's a seven year um, policy where it needs to be maintained. Um, and then each department, like I said, is, is utilizing it differently. I'm assisting the highway department this week with purchasing their own scanner so that they can scan and start doing that as well. 
Um, so it's really department by department at this point. And I just, I've been doing it unofficially um, for the past three to four years in Leverett. And then just this last Tuesday select board meeting that I went to, um, I had to get an exemption because I serve as the deputy chief. Um, so it took a little while to go get through that exemption process. So this week is my first official week going through them, but I've informally assisted them with email projects, wireless uh, network setups and things like that during my wheelhouse. Everyone, it's like Roy Combs joined us, so. Roy, you want to take your mic off? Or on? Yeah. There sure. you are. On. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi, Roy. Uh, um, well, let me uh, say at the outset, uh, and Brian should uh, be aware of this, that uh, we have two, he, uh, we have two main uh, offices. One is at the town hall where the assessor's office is, and the other is, I'm going to call it the police station. It's really the town offices uh, at 32 Main Street. They are connected with a VPN, but we subscribe to Comcast. That really, Comcast and uh, MBI Fiber were the only, are really the only game in town here. And um, we wound up going with Comcast just because they were a lot cheaper than MBI. That said, Comcast upload speeds are by design limited. Even if we spent quite a bit more per month and we spend a considerable amount per month um, as when you compare it to the residential service. So um, my initial thought is that uh, these, it's almost like these documents would be better pulled down from the cloud, if I will, rather than pulled across that VPN. So that, that's, that's one thought that, um, uh, that I should mention. Uh, I have uh, the other thing I'll address, uh, and Trish, uh, Trish knows this as well, Trish Van Cheesy, uh, where she's, she's produced the document that the Commonwealth puts out that uh, has the, re I think they're required retention periods for certain documents while there aren't. So in any case, in, in, I also want to mention uh, in, in reading Lee's communication, it's obvious there are a bunch of things that she wants or needs to have paper access to. And I don't know if it's just because of, um, uh, yes, certainly when you're for seal uh, with an electronic system and everything's working great, the stuff flows down, bam, you get them in a heartbeat. Uh, however, that is not necessarily the case with everybody who works here, at least at this point in time. And so I, I think there are, there are two distinct needs. There's the need to store paper. We may not like it, or certain individuals may not like it, but that's just, that's, that's a fact. Uh, is, does it require a new set of shelving? I really don't know. And then there's the uh, scanning of what I would want to call, I, I would want to call them more, more routine kind of documents. But if, if my memory serves me, when I went through, um, uh, through the Commonwealth's uh, thing, and I didn't go through it in detail because there's a lot to it, oh, things like charters, uh, even charters of committees, I think, or of uh, uh, just various structural parts of the town have to be maintained in paper as you know and if you want electronic it's optional um and so i think that that needs to and you know maybe brian uh, maybe i don't know if you've seen that document but it's um actually there were two versions that i've seen one is a very nice pdf and the other's a, a um uh a, what do you call it um you know an html kind of manual to it um i could you know I could send it over to, so uh, that's, that's really, I, I don't think I really, you know, need to say um, too much more, um, except that that, that is a very real um, limitation in terms of, uh, in ter you know, be nice if the town had a leased line uh, that went between the two physical buildings, but we don't, it's always been too costly. Uh, we've tried different things over the years and at this moment in time, there's there's simply a, a VPN connection, which for 
you know, it's, it's an encrypted tunnel between the two, but it's, 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 it's also fine for smaller documents. You get into bigger things. Um, it, it, you may wind up with issues. And as I say, because the download that Comcast provides is so much faster than the upload, uh, it may be just better to pull those things in from, from the cloud. And uh, Steve, I don't know if you mentioned, you, you said you saw this. Did you see the scan, the scanner that's, it, you know, there's two scanners. One is in the town office and the other is at the town hall. The one that uh, Lee, Lee would be using is the one that's at the town hall. And uh, so are you, have you, is that? I've not seen that one, but uh, you okay. know, I also did look at the um, scanning requirements, how long you can keep documents. I looked at it pretty closely. It was a long document, but yeah. it seemed like most of the documents would be able to be scanned. That's what they're going to. They're trying to be more efficient as a government, whether it's state level or city or county or yeah. town. Yeah. Uh, so That's are you in favor generally though of, of uh, electronic scanning and get I, as I, much as we can. As a, as a rule, I have no, I have no issue with it. Uh, you just have to be very, you have to be careful as to where your offsite storage is, and I that because that's the key. That's the, the the Synology hardware or the file server hardware that we currently have. We we have a tough time even locating. And I mean, right now our file server, you folks don't pr probably don't know where it is, but for lack of a place that doesn't get disturbed, it happens to be in the fire department, uh, the fire chief's office, because he's hardly ever in there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, so uh, um, uh, all, you know, we have a bit, we have a cellar. It's not, uh, it's not an, it's not a really ideal environment for, for this type of stuff. Um, and also there's always the possibility of flood, et cetera, et cetera. So it's that offsite storage that becomes key to when when there's a disaster. Okay, now Steve, I, I appreciate what you've said. 15 years, etc. I can tell you that uh, there have been more than a few um, companies that I have been called into, and more recently than 15 years ago, where they had a disaster on the place, not of my making, but I had to clean up the mess. And it's really, uh, you know, it, it's scary. It's not pretty. In the, uh, in the private industry world, they say, if you can't get yourself back online in, I don't know, a couple of days, you're basically out of business these days. And that's even, that's even a long time, a couple of days. So uh, all this stuff, ha you know, it, it all has to be entered into it. I have no, I really have no clue what the size of the uh, repository that we would require actually is. Uh, 500 gigs. Yeah. Would you have it's, an objection, uh, Roy, to talk to Brian offline, no, 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 offline, and have a discussion? He can ask you a few questions and absolutely. come back with a proposal yeah. maybe next week or two weeks or whatever. Yeah, it, it, sure, sure. But, but he, I he, think he, he is so efficient in terms of what he has done for our company. I, and I'm sure. Companies. I'm sure. But but never become too complacent because look at Microsoft. Look what just happened to Microsoft. And this is unheard of. And I have to tell you, and I, I'm, I'm going to digress, but people need to hear this. Microsoft Exchange, which is Outlook, basically. Outlook is the front end to it. This thing is in use everywhere, okay? It is, uh, it's the de facto standard, if you will, of, uh, of, mail, of, of corporate mail servers and mailboxes. Well, guess what? They got hacked. And they were talking, uh, to, the number I saw was 30,000 servers. These were on-prem servers, okay, got hacked. And what, they don't, they still don't know what's going to become of it. They don't know what the extent of the hacking is. They don't know what the purpose is, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how many of these mail servers became inoperative? I really don't know, but I, I don't think it's a coincidence. This morning, one of my clients, um, uh, a medical client, okay? Now they, and again, see, but you don't maybe deal with stuff like this, but uh, they have to, part of their authentication process is they have to, from a website, they have to request an authentication token that gets emailed to them. 
This is Medicare, by the way. Well, guess what? They had a problem and it was related to these exchange servers. So um, did they eventually get around it? Yes, okay. But my reason for this example is that none of this stuff is foolproof. And the very time you need it most is the time that it breaks. I can tell you this from, <laughs> from, from a lot of experience. That said, as long as everybody, and it's not just me, because I don't, I'm not the decision maker with this. The, ta the select board, um, the departments have to get on board with this. If folks are on board with this, I will do everything that I can to help whoever, um, Brian or whoever, you know, wants to do this. So I'll, I'll certainly help to the maximum of my ability. But um, I, you know, just I, I, ha I owe it. It's my responsibility to have people be forewarned. Um, last thing, because I know I'm monopolizing this. Um, in tech, you know, in technology, one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. And so what scanning, a scanning solution does, it requires that a person be able to retrieve the document. And that at that moment in time, whatever, whatever they use to retrieve the doc, it's gotta be operational and it's gotta be able to be timely. And so it's, an, it's another layer. And again, I have enough experience to not trivialize this. Um, and that's really, that's, the, that's, that's what I want to say. So, so if costs seem to be really low, they're not as low as you think. <laughs> okay. Roy, we've had scanners for a while and Lee makes it sound like they are making an effort to move in that direction. Yes. Have we made progress or, uh, I, yeah. I mean, my fear is if we say, let's not buy the cabinets and let's go full bore on trying to do the kind of solution that Levert is doing, we'll end up just putting this off a year. I mean, you know, we'll end up not doing that. I think it's a two-pronged thing. I think, I think that the documents we need to store need to be clearly identified and we need to have a fireproof place that is accessible and that meets their needs, okay? And the other side of it is we need to have a way to scan. And honestly, scanning is not rocket science. So, you know, I mean, an individual can scan. You don't even need to have a dedicated person to scan. It could become part of, uh, uh, you know, part of the job of the current, uh, you know, uh, of the current staff. That, you know, so I, I, I see it's too prompt. I don't, I, you're not gonna be able to throw away all the paper, but you certainly be able to scan more than we do. Because as far as I know, we don't scan anything from an operational point of view. Historical stuff, yeah. And, and if you were to ask me where are they storing it, I have no idea. I have no idea where the storage is. It's not on our servers, um, so far as I know. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Roy, would you mind uh, sending me an email with your contact information, phone, and, and sure. that? forwarded on to Brian, who I've invited to come. Sure. Um, but yes, we have been, we have gone through some mere, very intensive cybersecurity discussions over the last five to eight years, I guess, that we had to meet compliance requirements and so forth, that Brian is very able to do that for, for anyone, but for us, certainly, and has put us on that without a whole lot of cost. Cybersecurity okay. is a big world. He learned a lot in it, but yeah. we've, made, we've made no mistakes in terms of what we've got. We've got all our documents. We haven't any disaster, large or small. I'm just saying one person's opinion. You can put Microsoft against it, but That's you know, very I, I would rely on it. We wouldn't do, be as efficient as we are with hundreds of thousands of insurance documents and then policies and so forth and so on if we didn't have scanning. No, so, I, I, I get that and I appreciate that. Um, but I will also suggest that the, the ta a town's requirement are vastly different than a business's requirement. And um, not if you're in banking, not if you're in banking or finance, they're very sure. stiff on compliance. Yes, that, that is true. But okay. I, I, 
but still, but it's, uh, Towns is still somewhat different. Let's let's put it that way. Look, okay. I, I it's I'm this stuff is not foreign to me. I have financial service clients. I have medical clients. I have legal clients, and so it it's <laughs> it's a. But again, uh, you know, it, it, the compliance is not what we're really talking about here, other than the fact that we don't want to be tossing, shredding paper that the Commonwealth says you've got to hold on to, okay? Uh, I mean, and, and so again, I think there's that piece, there's the paper that can be scanned as part of operations. So that's the two, two pronged approach. But the third approach is, are people, are people going to be able to use it? And, you know, we have, just to give you an example, Steve, you know, it took, we've, we've had a, uh, every time we go through a migration, uh, assessor, the assessors went through a, uh, a migration. They left one piece of software and brought on another. And they've had to run parallel systems for a year and a half because everything has to match, everything has, has to jive. And um, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's just something that it, it's something that was a, a a time suck. I'll tell you that, and and uh, sucked away some money also. Um, well, well Roy, the decision and we have to make is whether we're going to deny Lee the shelving that she's requesting. Why and don't then, we just see if there's some other modification that could be made at a much lower cost? To and so we can get our house in order so that we can proceed with, you know, with, with the goal in mind that yes, we're going to scan as much as practic as much as as much as practically possible. How's how's that? I, I don't know, you know, because there may be look, the Commonwealth may say you got to you don't have to save things beyond seven years. Well, Lee had some stuff that goes back twenty years that she. It was clear to me, at least in reading her thing, that she likes to have access to. Now, if you told her, well, she's going to have easy access to it electronically, would she buy that? I don't know. I don't know. Now, look, Lee isn't going to be there forever either. And so, you know, I don't know if that's a fair qu question, but I think that what I'm trying to say is, is really three prongs to this. The, uh, the paper, the scanning, and then the, per the, um, the uh, process, the operational process to it. Trish, what do you think? Who are you asking? Trisha. Uh, Trisha. Yes. Our expert. Hey, oh, man. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> folks, we live our lives on a computer. So, it only makes sense to safeguard, you know whatever we're doing in some sort of electronic form going forward. So the issue is at, at the end of the day, it's probably a combination of both. So we need to be forward looking. The forward looking solution is clearly scanning, okay? My concern is multifold in terms of where we are right now, which is the vault's a mess, all right? We don't even know what's in there. And, you know, somebody could just build a couple of shelves in there and, you know, clean it up and store some stuff that maybe can't be scanned. Yeah. But from an administrative <laughs> point of view, from an administrative point of view, we may invest in some scanning and it's the way to go long term, the future. But somebody's got to develop a policy. Somebody's got to develop an SOP to make sure that it's a regular routine part of people's job to scan in documents once they've been dealt with. And it has to be townwide to Brian's credit. He's in the fire department and the fire department's been scanning documents that are 40 years old. We have that situation probably in all our departments too. So, you know, Lee's the one that brought this forward. She arguably has the most records and it has the most records that need to be maintained. But if we look at this from uh, 10,000 feet, there's probably a lot other records that can be scanned in as well. So we need to do a little homework from just instead of the little assessor's point of view from all the town departments. So I'm really concerned that 
you know, we get the equipment and we do the scanning and that's all roses and ice cream. And then we don't do what it's intended to do, which is to archive these records and have them available. So the administrative challenge really lies with the select board and the town administrator to make sure that if we do this and we invest in this, we actually do what we wanna do with it. And that's on the go forward and then start to deal with the backlog of what we already have in terms of records and get them scanned in. But I went and looked at the vault with Bob and this records in there, there's flags in there, there's junk in there, nobody knows what's in there. So if you clean that vault out and buy some off the rack, some shelving to put some bigger stuff in, that may solve some problems too. So at the end of the day, you might be looking at 70% scanning and 30% shelving, but you have to address the administrative issue and you have to look at it as a town-wide solution. So, um, so you know, maybe that's a little bit of both what Roy is saving, saying and what Steve is suggesting, but we live in a virtual world, we live in an electronic world. So I think it makes strate strategic you know, sense to be prepared to go forward with our documents to scan them. And also, you know, we've got to do with the backlog of all the documents we have already that need to be scanned. One thing I was trying to anticipate with this is that I've heard, I'm a newbie on the finance committee. I've only been on for a few months, but I've heard this shelving issue with the town has been turned down several times, regardless of whether the select board or, or the finance committee. Is that true or not? No, no that's, that's not is, true. Yeah, I haven't the, seen it. The capital committee hasn't seen it. Yeah, first no. it's come up. Yeah. It's never been turned down before? No. no. The past 12, 14 years. <laughs> okay. I've been, on the, I've been on the finance committee a long time. I've never seen it. Would it be turned down? Will we likely think it'll be turned down? Well, if there's an alternative to spending twenty-two thousand dollars on shelving, that uh, and and lets us be pointed in the uh, direction of the future, uh, why wouldn't it be turned down? And and if it's perceived that the room is a mess and that just going through it and cleaning it out could solve all the problems, then that's things in danger. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you: Was Lee there when you went into it? No. Okay. And so you went into the one. Let's make sure we have the right vault. The one in the town. Hall. Hall. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because there's, I, I, there... I would I would disagree, Philip. I I think the whole world's been living uh, using a computer for the past twelve months. So if anything, they have a great appreciation for the fact that we live in a technological world right now. Yeah. Who's nobody's disputing that, Trish. I think a, a combined, Trish, uh, combined shelving and electronic scanning, especially if there's less in this request, take account of some of Lee's stuff might be good. So, you know, is it possible to have, Lee may not be available for meetings. Is that what I understand? You've been talking about it? She, she, has, she has some personal uh, issues that, that are occupying her time. Uh, yeah, last meeting and this meeting. So yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're serious issues. And it's uh, she's on the, also yeah. on the on the TA uh, committee search committee. So um, she's not made there either. So yeah. I'm just yeah. worried about us getting time to have a this going through the the, uh, you know, under the under the floorboards some without getting consideration. But and, Alan, what did you want to say? Thank you, Bob. You know, my thought is, if you go to, t we, we don't have actual written quotes for either the shelving and or the uh, scanning. And that if we had some formal written quotes before us on both, maybe from a couple of different sources, then we could give us a little more to chew on. But otherwise, a lot of the things we're discussing right now about things were a mess and this and that, it's all uh, very hypothetical and not, not non-specific. And my experience has been that if we really want to get something passed, Give people something concrete and specific to uh, to muster, and they'll buy into it. That's just that's my it's my thought. Thank you. The, the 
program, the um, proposal I solicited from Brian is less than $5,000 to give you an idea of the cost. Right. So, so maybe you got a couple of different proposals, you know, a couple of different yeah, options couple there. Of those would be great, but it, yeah. it, at least the finance committee and stuff board got the results down from the capital planning act. Yeah. Proposal. And I'm not too worried about the town turning it down in town meeting because we can always bring it back. Look at the town hiring. Well, <laughs> just, no, no, just, honestly, uh, just no. to break in here um, um, maybe I'm going to say what, what, what Roy was, was going to say but we have all the hardware and the software we need um, what, we, what we need now is a real estimate of how much time it's going to take to scan what we need to scan and that's what we don't know and I did send out a note to all the department heads asking them to tell me you know how many records they they need to permanently preserve and and i didn't hear anything back so you know we're going to have to go with the records retention schedule but i don't know how many documents we know what kinds of documents we need to preserve permanently for instance tax records but we don't um we don't know um how many of those there are how many you know feet of shelf space that kind of thing so um, I think that's the level of analysis that we're talking about now. And, and we just don't know that at this point. Maybe, we can invite, maybe you can, we can invite Lee just to view this portion of the YouTube broadcast and just comment on it. She's able to, to send in written comments every week. We record, we're recording yeah. this so she can listen to the recording. Good. It will be up. Yeah. Yeah, sh sure. Um, if she has the time, we're we're keeping track of that, and uh, I it, and we'll let you know when she's available. What I'm hearing is that although Steve, you got some pushback on whether it's ever been turned down in the past, it sounds like we may be heading there this year. While we make a real attempt at getting more serious about scanning. And and maybe we'll ultimately learn this year that we can't do that. But I, I, I'm not hearing much support for twenty thousand for shelving. But I, you know, Bob, if I may, I don't think that the shelving quote is like an all in. I mean, I think it's certainly in the realm of possibility to piecemeal this and that there is a potential to have a Warren article that states something to the effect that there's a combination of scanning and shelving with a not to exceed amount that lets us at least open the door to begin to do this. That's a palatable amount that we can both live with. And then if it's a colossal failure, you know, you know, we haven't gotten too much invested in it. But I certainly think that we can do that for $7,500 or less. I mean, Brian, do you know how much Leverett appropriated to do this? We appropriated $10,000 or up to $10,000. And that's town-wide, right? Correct. And when did you appropriate that money for what fiscal year? I believe it was FY19. Okay, okay. How much actual storage does Leverett still use? Uh, I mean, paper storage. Paper storage, uh, lesser and lesser every day. Um, it's an ongoing scanning project to archive those digitally, um, but not, I don't know the, the spaces that you're storing your data in or paper wise, um, but yeah, it's less and less um, we're able to, we're shredding and purging. And so Are you scanning uh, plans and, and, and documents of, you know, uh, like, planning scale documents? Yeah, I believe they're all, all sizes and types. Um, the town clerk's Good. spearheading a lot of that. Yeah, I'll mention that the town hall scanner is, is larger than the, than the one in the town office. How about conservation commission documents? Those I'm not sure of. Like I said, I, I have unofficially dipped my feet in the last three, four years and then officially for about a week now. <laughs> and we're, I've been focusing on getting a phone system up for the, the school. Yeah. Well, 
Well, Tricia, I mean, I like your idea. If you think we can write a warrant article that could be an amount of money that could be flexible. A message for, uh, this is for Tom Hutchinson. Tom, have you given any date by which the department heads have to get back in terms of scanning needs? You think it'll be before uh, no. April? April? All right, so you don't have an idea before we send the warrant out to town meeting. All right, thank you. What did you say, Alan? You won't have an idea or you will have an idea? We won't have, we, then we probably won't have an idea because we have to, the uh, things go out to town meeting by uh, what, mid-April usually? Yeah, okay. It's a month away. Well, it, it's it's pushed back a month now. All right, so we have until, mid, so we have until, uh, we have until the end of April, early May to, uh, Get more feedback from department heads. You see, the department heads, whoever does this, I mean, is, you know, if if every department was responsible for its own scanning, that's one thing. But that's not going to happen because um, it's just not going to happen. So the question is then becomes, do we do we hire a person who's going to do this? You know, because I guess where I'm getting at is it's really impossible to know what this is going to cost, what this would do to individual department budgets if if we said, well, let's let's let our, each department be responsible for it. I mean, maybe fiscally they could be. Maybe there could be a line item in their, you know, in their in their budget that supports, you know, an individual who's going to do nothing but scan. There's a lot. There's, a, there's, there's good and bad reasons to have an individual who does nothing but scan because they get to be really good at it. Um, but the other thing I'll, I'll comment too, not everything needs to be shoved in all at once either. I mean, you know, the stuff going backwards can be done over time and, um, and certainly going forward, you know, you, 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 you keep up with it. So uh, unless there was a compelling reason that this stuff going backwards has to be has to be uh, done, you know, as as soon as possible, it could be done over several years. Even I would imagine, you know, if if uh, yeah, depending on how much one wanted to throw at it at at a point in time. Honestly, a ten thousand dollar investment to get it all done with is not it's not that terrible, if in fact that's going to do the job. You know, I mean. I think it, I think it can be done for that. I think it can be done for ten thousand or less. I mean, the issue, Tom. Where are the conservation and planning board records stored? In the town, town hall. The, the best uh, board of town hall. Basement. Right. Yeah, so, they're they're, in the, they're upstairs. They're upstairs in the town hall. So the bulk of the records you're going to have, other than you know, because you have to consider boards and committees, and most of the thick stuff is going to be conservation and and planning board is your treasurer collector, your assessors and your town clerk. Those are where the bulk of the records are gonna come from. But um, I, th I think given what Brian has said and that um, Leverett did that for 10,000 two years ago. And I mean, we're just talking, you know, building some shelves around the perimeter maybe of the vault just to get them out of the, you know, just to give some organization or whatever and some hanging shelves. Um, I, I think that's definitely within the realm of possibility. And if it's not, it's not, but I would be surprised. We're small, we're smaller than Leverett. And I'm, I'm happy to call Margie in Leverett and talk to her. Margie's there, right, Brian? Yep, she's still the town administrator. I can yep. get you her contact info too. Yeah, no, nope, I have it. <laughs> so, Bob, if we if we if we if we've uh, beaten this horse around enough, um, I've got uh, I've got a, a, a another. I just wanted to raise something to the pl uh, capital planning committee while they're here, and that's just um, something that just came up in the. Uh, the consultant report that was forwarded to us from that was done on behalf of the Ashfield Fire Department. I think we just got that on Friday or something. Um, but the 
the uh, the real interesting thing that I just wanted to bring to your attention was that consultant's recommendation that for fire apparatus and ambulance apparatus, you start a separate stabiliza capital stabilization fund for those. And um, that, and we have that those. not for fire or ambulance, we have no. general. We have it for ambulance, but not for fire. All right. So, yeah. yeah. So, so for, so we're 10 years out or more than 10 years from them needing to replace equipment, but starting now to put 10 or 20 grand a year, um, would, would, uh, would, would certainly make that more palatable when the time comes. So Tom, I'll, I'll just put that, that out money there. Out of general stabilization for the fire truck. I think we have in the past, but well, and um, we borrowed, you know, yeah. we, we just, yeah. we just cut the price by putting some stabilization in there, but but that's you know that was what half a million dollars or more, almost six hundred thousand. I don't know. I, the idea made sense to me. That's why I bring it up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Who did who did the study for? Who did the uh, consultant? Who who yeah. was the consultant? Yeah. Uh, he, um, was a, uh, he was a retired fire chief. Yeah, of a, course. Uh, yeah, and, and and a current and a current <laughs> a current attorney, and um, he was from the Cape. Yeah, we yeah. just said it to you. It was yeah. excellent. It was very well done. And, and, and he managed to actually study Conway very well. As, um, pages 34 through 40 are really about Conway. And uh, he sort of did a, did a study of us, too. It's, it's good reading. Just... So here's my thought about capital stabilization. First of all, the town's to be commended that they have them because um, it's really great. But that's the purpose of the capital stabilization fund to fund capital, all capital. And anytime you start to bifurcate departments and favor one department over another and pit them against one another for capital, you have the makings of real serious conflict. The purpose of the capital stabilization fund is to fund capital throughout the community and it's to fund fire apparatus or highway apparatus or any other kind of apparatus. And the clear use of the capital stabilization fund is to buy fire apparatus. So why you would wanna create an entirely separate one makes absolutely no sense to me. And in my 31 years of working in local government, I have never seen it. So it does not surprise me the recommendation came from a fire chief who has an inherent vested interest. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let me just mention that our that our ambulance stabilization fund, the reason it's separate is because it is funded solely through ambulance receipts. Right. And that's the only one that I've seen to do that. So they can and you need to be able to buy an ambulance when you need to buy a new ambulance. That's not something you can delay. Well, wait, OK, wait a sec. The ambulance, Trish, we, we we got that formula down pretty well for an ambulance. You you know how it works, more or less? Yeah, I'm totally in favor, and that's exactly what Tom just said, oh, is okay. that you buy the new ambulance with the revenues generated from the new ambulance. Right. But it's a slippery slope, yeah. folks, when you start creating different funds for different departments. Uh, I, I see what you say. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Yep. Good point. Good point, Trish. So, Shelvin. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're done with shelving for now. I, I, I guess we're, I mean, we're not going to make a decision. Uh, Trish, you're going to talk to the uh, administrator in Leverett and you know, get a feel for what, what it took for them to do it. I know Brian has talked about it. Yeah, I'm happy to do that if folks are okay with it. Margie's pretty knowledgeable. Can Brian talk to Roy also? Sure. I've, I've chatted you my stuff. If, okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to talk with Lee. Sounds great. Well, so that, that's it for our joint meeting then. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So this third, this separately regarding the Conway Grammar School and Frontier Regional this coming Thursday at so, six. So Tuesday, t tomorrow is Frontier. Okay. And then um, next next Thursday at six is a joint meeting 
with the select board, the finance committee, and the school committee of conduct. Oh, uh, that's so. That's uh, not this week. The next week. Okay. Right. Thank right. you. And Phil, Phil, you're going to make sure that gets posted as a joint meeting. Yeah, you say it. It will. But yeah, if you could please forward me and then the fellow, I'll forward to the federal finance committee members the uh, Zoom date, meeting dates for the Conway Grammar School and the joint with the. With the, with the yeah, the, the school Conway uses the school there. uses Google Meet, so it'll be a it'll be that instead of Zoom. But okay. Um, are we right. planning to attend individually the Frontier meeting tomorrow? Tomorrow. Well, yes. if 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 you saw the budget numbers, it's optional. The if you if oh, you yeah. saw, for you if, if you have whatever if you saw the budget numbers there, you, you 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 can't realistically even hope for anything better than that for Conway. If you yeah. saw that the total increase That's in assessment of six thousand dollars, um, so I spend several hours. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. idea is. The idea is not to have separate meetings with just Conway for either Frontier or the Conway Grammar School. So I think it is very important that people attend these um, to get an idea of what's on tap for next year. Um, that said, that is what I had scheduled for next Monday. So at this point, I don't see a, a need for the Finance Committee to meet with the Select Board next Monday. Be great. Okay. So just the schools, <laughs> schools tomorrow and schools on a week from Thursday. Yeah. And uh, so somebody, I think uh, Darius sent around, uh, right? Uh, Modesto, he, he sent around yeah. the, uh, but he sent it around for tomorrow's meeting. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, correct. there hasn't, there hasn't been a link created yet for okay. next Thursday. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Okay. Sounds great. So we're not on for next Monday as a finance committee, Alan. Right? Yes, understood. Thank you, Steve. Yep, yep. All right. Thank okay. you. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for the right. discussion. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you for good work. Have a thank good you. One. Okay. Do we have any items Bye. not anticipated in the last 48 hours? I don't. Me, anybody? No? Me too. Your update time. All right. Um, just a few items and under committees and boards. Uh, Malcolm Course has stepped down as chair of the Community Preservation Committee, and next week we'll have a candidate for filling the select board appointment left by Amy Anderson, who will continue as the Open Space Committee representative. I expect they'll be meeting to consider the request for funds to support the acquisition of land related to the South River flood mitigation project, and that Dusty King will be acting as chair. In related news, I plan to bring a proposal for that purpose to you next week to apply to the Community Preservation Committee for funding a phase two environmental assessment on land previously occupied by an industrial business in the 19th century. Uh, also, I'm moving forward with hiring an assistant for town boards and committees and plan to place an ad in the recorder this week. I plan to post the position at $20 an hour, which is what the prior assistant was slated to have gotten this year if townwide town -wide raises had been approved. And how many hours yeah. was that? How many hours a week? It's about six. And I'll probably say I'll probably say six to eight, something like that, just in case. Um, in departmental news, uh, Louise and I spent some time responding to a public records request for information regarding our aggregation effort. We don't know why the records are being sought, but we complied with the request as required. And then I, uh, I just had to mention that um, uh, we were that we don't need to meet with the finance committee next week, um, uh, and that. Nonetheless, we should still soon start having votes on recommendations on the town meeting warrant. Um, please let me know if you have any preferences for that over the next few days so I can start scheduling that. Um, and in the past, we have done that with the Finance Committee as well. It's pretty efficient. We get some things talked out. So, um, And I'll, I'll talk with Bob about it as well. But just if, if you have any thoughts on that, let me know. That's it for me. Any select board concerns? Uh, any mail? So uh, 
we, we did get a couple of pieces of mail and not to talk about it a lot, but I just want to mention mail that we did get. One was from the Conway Grammar School that they would like to talk to us about um, some additional money for their playground equipment. Um, so, you know, should we have uh, Kristen or someone from the school come in next week and talk about that? Any or the week after? I don't Bob, know how full our agenda is. Bob, if it's okay, when when I uh, when I talk to them about the joint meeting, I, I asked that that this be put on the agenda for that since we're all going to be there. Great, because um, it really is a request from the school committee, and you want the administration there and everything else. But um, just so that you know, so that Erica, so that you know that the the bid the bids came in for the playground project, and the 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 low bid was three seventy nine. So the amount that ta the town appropriated through the CPA money last year was two hundred and fifty thousand. So, and that before um, last year, during when when they came before the select board and they came before the CPA group, they had, you know, talked about how a lot of these designs, a lot of the construction is going to be for the handicapped kids or the disabled kids, and so um, part of the mission of the Germain Fund is to uh, to to is is to provide benefits for the handicapped children of Conway. And so, you know, it's 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 sort of um, up to us to sort of ascertain what the, you know, what what the people that established the trust, what their intent is. So you can just read the clear language of it for that, and um, and then that's what you know. So we're going to need to know how much what the balance is on the Germain Fund. Um, so, so Tom can send us all that data over yeah. the next you know week, and, or, you know, and I'm going to want Tom, Tom and. and just so whether Tom recalls that, that it was the Germain Fund that we were talking about last May when we voted to approve it. Um, yeah, there right? are two different Germain right. funds. Right. Right. There's there's the Mark and Mildred Boyce Germain, and there's the Marie Honorine Germain Fund. In the language, both of those funds specify only spending the interest that those funds make, not spending the you know, the right. We we never we right. never yeah. spend we never spend the um, original capital. So Just so you know. I mean, a Tom can send you the and and the other thing that they specify is they they specify um, helping the needy, handicapped children of Conway. So you're 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 muted, Erica. Uh, that was how we funded the pond renovation, too, right? Wasn't the Germain Fund? It was, and and it really, it was a. I believe it. Was, I believe it was a mistake. Uh, um, I mean, it's past because history. Because it's private and, land, or well, well we don't that, have to go into it now. It's right, we, but that that's the fund that funds all of our scholarships, and so after we funded a lot of money out of that fund for the pond. We now have almost, you know, we have a, a fraction of the interest that to, to provide for scholarships. Mm -hmm. So the amount of money for scholarships is is very low now, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I I want to I don't remember that language that says don't spend principal only interest, but I, I I'll, I'll look at that again. But um, the the um, we can, we can't spend the principal. That that's the endowment. That's just right. basic. So that that's not even in their will. That's just that's just a all right, law. So, you know. so then, so then, you, Bob, your concern is that we spend the interest, whatever, all the interest in the, what the accrued interest over time. Your 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 concern is that if we spend that down too much, then it, you can't do the other things that the fund is intended for. Th that's right. That's right. So, and th in defense of the pool, they did do that handicapped elderly uh, paved path. Down, which um, it really, you know, people I've seen people in wheelchairs use that pool now, and especially I think it's for, wonderful. No, I'm and, not, and for, I'm not for the town's you're... elderly, for the town's elderly, especially my mother who could not go to that pool for ten years now can go to the pool and walk down that paved path for the elderly and handicapped. So, um, and, and the, the trade-off uh, is that we now have a, 
a, a real reduction in how much we can hand out for scholarships. Uh, I'll just also note um, that it is my understanding that in accepting public money um, for that project, uh, that the Conway pool now is required to be open to the public. Oh. Beyond just the uh, town of Conway? Hmm. Yes. That's my understanding. I don't have a legal ruling on that, but that's, that is my understanding. Interesting. Well, luckily the playground is open 24 seven. <laughs> yeah. 365. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I guess that's one of the questions. Can we do what they're asking? So. So we already have a meeting with them scheduled, a joint meeting. That's for said? next Thursday at six. Thursday. Okay. Great. Uh, we all, I think, I assume we all got a letter from the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership and it has to do with an upcoming um, event to try to choose the winner of a contest that's mm -hmm. being run. So uh, just kind of interesting. And one of, one of the one of the competitors is from Conway. So. And the Deerfield, uh, the Deerfield River people applied. I, I'm not sure who it is, but because I, uh, I, I talked to them and I asked them to and I, they were like, no. So if they ended up doing it, good. I think it was a, a wood. Uh, company making furniture making things oh, out of wood conway chair conway chair it may be, I, 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 I could say well, right, I got a presentation. Yeah. yeah 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 huh good the only other news i mean there is a lot of mail that's been going around about covid vaccines i don't want to talk mm -hmm. about it a lot but but there have been a number of releases of slots for people to get there's a lot of interest in town um, I really want to applaud the Board of Health and our emergency director, Murph. Thanks for doing a reverse 911. Um, I got letters from a lot of people saying that they, you know, they were at least going to try on Friday, try today to get reservations, and they learned about it through that reverse 911. Any other announcements? Okay. Our next meeting. Next Monday, dates will be March 15th, six o'clock right here. Okay, I make a motion, we adjourn. I second that. Unanimous, okay. Thank